he's a quarter German. And you are 100% from Lexington Steel while he's wearing a in Texas. No, actually, uh, I'm not. All right, you know what? We can't do this one. Seriously, we can't. I mean, the movie's flawless, first of all. Yeah, I mean, what can we make fun of? What are the major set pieces could we actually make fun of? What, the liquidation of the ghetto? The separation from the healthy and the sick uh, to the concentration camps? Auschwitz? We can't do this, right? No, we can't. Can't. Do it. Ben, you're awesome in this, but the sensitive subject matter means that we just can't do it. So, uh, no dice. I won't. You will, I told Ted you're doing it. Don't you show me up. No! no! Yes! 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 Wow. Okay. Uh, Liam Neeson. Smoking, drinking, some womanizing member of the Nazi party. And he sucks at business. And uh, he uses cheap, prison Jewish labor to get his business off the ground. Think of what the Mets would have to do in order to make the playoffs again. Ah, but you know what? It wouldn't be Jews. It'd be Puerto Ricans. And I can say that because I am a Puerto Rican and a proud one. Come on, Mets fans. You know when the lineup was dark and selfish, we were scoring runs. Schindler and his accountant, Itzhak Stern, played by Ben Kingsley, spend the course of the film saving lives. Now, Neeson and Kingsley are actually fantastic in this movie, uh, but we never hear them discussing saving lives. We know what they're doing, they know what they're doing, but they never actually discuss it on film. Because, you know, Voldemort. Yeah, I was top down, I'm fucking freezing. Ray Fiennes brilliantly plays Amon Goeth, a sociopath and commandant, who runs a concentration camp filled with Schindler's workers. He brought them there after he massacred the ghetto that he previously forced them to live in. First of many scenes in the film to make me cry. God, play game. That's Dennis Weaver from our 70s and 80s review of our Spielberg movies. He doesn't forgive us for calling him a pussy in the movie Duel. Now he shows up every time we cry. You mean every time you cry? Like, you didn't cry during Schindler's List. Well, who doesn't cry at the end of this movie? God, play game. Shiza. Not so funny, is it? No, because it's about the friggin' Holocaust. Actually, one of the film's biggest criticisms is that it's unlike other Holocaust films like The Pianist or The Dead Zone. Yeah, those movies make me want to slip my wrist the correct way. Down the highway, not across it. Schindler's List is actually filled with hope in the face of what was humanity's darkest hour. Now, Spielberg did try to hold back a little bit, but his traditional elements are still there, like reflections and heavy backlighting. There are real stylistic choices in its editing and music, and some people think that the subject is too sensitive to even take that kind of approach. Yeah, well, even for scenes like this. Ah, humor, humor, that's funny. And we think that's okay. Yeah. This isn't my favorite Spielberg movie for obvious reasons, because it's depressing. But, I don't think he's ever going to make a better one. 10 out of 10. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 too. It's just too bad the sequel was so terrible. Huh? Release the Kraken! Way to follow it up, fellas. You know they're making a sequel to that? Yes. It's called Wrath of the Titans. And it comes out next year. Remember... I found something! <laughs> What the f happened? I don't understand. I right know. Steve okay? He's fine. Are you okay? No. Do the review. Uh, Lost World. Oh, right. This is 1941 kind of bad. It's bloated, stupid, loud, obnoxious, unnecessary, and adjective. Except 1941 was early in Steve's career. Lost World is his follow-up to winning an Oscar. He should know how to do this by now. I mean, it's been four years, and yes, he did deserve that four years off, but this is what we get? It's like going to the Olympics, it's Tanya Harding, and we're Nancy Kerrigan. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? It's <laughs> too funny. Okay, instead of going through the plot of this movie, we're just gonna list what's wrong. Jeff Goldblum. Okay, this guy's great in a supporting role, and in the first one he was pretty awesome, but when you put him in a lead role, it's usually ended up being the same thing. Brundle fly. Oh, 
Brundlefly! All right, that's a good movie, which goes against our point, but whatever, he sucks here. Another thing that sucks is Julianne Less. Julianne Moore. More or less than Moore. She's supposed to be an intelligent scientist, but doesn't get naked, acts like an idiot, and she's just really stupid to move the plot along. It's a real downgrade from Dr. Sadler. Then there's Vince Vaughn. Yes, that Vince Vaughn, who's a downgrade from everything that's holy, good, and kind on this earth. What an asshole. Baby, that was money. Tell me that wasn't money. That was so demeaning. She smiled, baby. I can't believe what an asshole you are. That's a good movie, which again goes against our point, but whatever, he sucks here. Next is Richard Schiff, who uh, comes from East Chicken. Not that bad, actually. East Chicken? Yeah, you know, that TV show. The West Wing. Not East Chicken. You know, if you're gonna be a jerk, at least be a complete jerk and say East Drumstick. <laughs> He's not in a band, Patrick. Rounding out our quintuplet of shit is a kid. Because Steve just can't resist a cute goddamn kid, so the plot moves along. That's Goldblum's daughter, huh? Yeah. I don't really have his eyes. Her lips. Her nose. Her hair. Her mother must be Asian. To make matters worse, she uses her gymnastic skills against the dinosaurs. Hey, you! The poor raptor! He was impaled! You know, come to think of it, there's a lot of animal cruelty in this film. It's like Michael Vick Island. Yeah, except not real and nowhere near as horrible. Yeah, speaking of horrible, the villains in this film are just boring cardboard cutouts. With the exception of Pete Postlewaite. Pete, bless his heart, is the only one trying here. Maybe because he's the only one with good lines and a clear motivation, but he actually gives his character depth. We miss you, Pete. I wonder what he thought of this film. I was disappointed. Truly disappointing are the action scenes in this film. The first Jurassic Park had great action scenes that were actually plausible, despite the dinosaurs. Here, we get an RV sequence that gets more idiotic with every agonizing second. You know, we already talked about the gymnastics and the raptors. Then the movie has the nerve to keep going after they get off the island. Yeah, it basically goes from bad movie to bad Godzilla movie, which is really just a longer bad movie. Not to mention that Steve films all of the shots in the dark or at night, probably out of shame. It's not fun, it's excruciating. Five out of ten. Three out of ten. Just truly disgusting. 